class, I will go through and explain each one of these. So hopefully you know um, how to do them on your quiz. So we have Eli wants to go jet skiing this summer. It will cost $25 per hour. I remember whenever I said there's a rate. If there's a rate, that's always your slope. The rate is always your slope. So $25 per hour um, to rent, plus a one-time fee of $30. So see, that's one-time fee. So no matter how long you go jet skiing, you always have to pay at least $30. That's your starting. So this number is going to be our y-intercept. Which makes sense if you think about it, right? So if Eli goes jet skiing for, let's say, two hours, you'd have to take 25 times 2. And so x is going to be the number of hours that he goes jet skiing. You take 25 times 2, that's $50 for the 2 hours, plus the $30 insurance. So you take 2 times the 25, plus the 50, Sorry, plus the $30 of insurance, so you get 50 plus the 30, it would be $80 for two hours. So that's the same as when x is 2, so if x is our hours, y, if it goes for two hours, how much would that cost? y would be 80. So we already have one of our coordinate points down. All right, so we're going to write an equation, slope-intercept form, for the cost. So this is the slope-intercept form of our equation. And we always plug in the slope for m, and the letter b is where our y-intercept goes. The x and the y stay as an x and a y. The x, again, represents our hours, and the y represents the total cost. So I have y, the cost is going to equal our slope times x, $25 per hour, plus the y-intercept of 30, so plus that $30 insurance fee. So what's the slope mean in context? Well, that's how much they're charging per hour. So I'm going to say it is the rental rate per hour. That's what the $25 means, is how much it costs an hour. So what's the right intercept to represent in this context? So context means, in this problem in particular, talking about this jet ski problem, so the y-intercept represents the one-time fee of $30 for insurance. If you're ever not sure, like, how to word it, so look at this. One-time fee of $30 for insurance. Like, you can write it word for a word. I have in the description. You can write that it will cost $25 per hour to rent like, you can write that word for word, and you would get it right in the story problem. So write what those numbers are word for word. Um, if you want to use that kind of little trick, if you have trouble with describing that. So in mapping this, there's a couple of ways. Um, I'm going to do the, I'm going to use the slope and the y-intercept to start off. So my y-intercept is 30. That's my starting point for my line. So it, that means it, this is the y-axis. It's going to cross at 30 on the y-axis, right here, my y-intercept. So the starting rate is 30. And then it costs $25 per hour. My slope is 25. You can think of it in a fraction, 25 over, run, over, over 1. I'll rise over run, so I go up 25 over 1. Now, don't count the lines on this, because I'm here, the lines are each worth 5 the way I numbered it. And one line isn't worth 1. Remember, 1 is way over here. Here's after 1 hour. So we go up 25 from 30, so I think, okay, 30 plus 25, 3, 4, 5, that will give me 55. So up 25 from here is going to be 55. And you can think, okay, 10, 20, and then 5, and then over 1, all the way over here to where it's 1 hour. And that's how, how much it would cost. So it would cost $55 for 1 hour. And then you go up 25 again. So you go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 over 1. Again, not one line, but I find where 2 hours is, which is right here. So remember earlier I said if it's 2 hours, you pay $25 twice to get 50 plus the third dollar. So I said after 2 hours, it's going to cost $80. So when x is 2, y is 80. So your graph should show that. So look at this. After 2 hours here, I have, when x is 2 hours, y is 80, $80. So that's another way you can do it. Like if you um, are kind of confused on doing rise over run, you can just plug numbers in. 
So my next number is for 3 hours. You can use this equation if you want. Figure out what is y going to equal if I have 3 for x. And you can do the math this way as another option. So you can do 25 times 3. So if you're in jet skiing for 3 hours, $25 for every hour, that's $75. And then plus that $30 insurance fee is going to be at 105 So I have an L when x is 3, y is 105. So that's my coordinate point. You can plot 3, 105 coordinate point there. So my graph, at 3 hours, I go up, I find 105, which is going to be right here. And you see how that lines up perfectly with my dots here? So that's another way you can plot the graph. Now that second way is useful for a question like number 5. If Eli goes jet skiing for 4 hours, how much will it cost? So 4 hours, so think hours, is the x. This is our x. So when x equals 4, how much will it cost? So what's y going to equal? You can use your equation. You can use your graph. So you can see at 4 hours here, you can go up and see what it's going to cost. I don't have a dot there, but you can always count um, slope up 25. So you can think um, we're at 105 here. And if you go up 25 from 105, that would be 130. So you get to 134. So using the graph, I was able to see that it would be at 130. Don't forget the units. We're talking about how much it will cost, $130. You can also use the equation. So here's our equation. And after 4 hours, so that's when x is 4. So I plug that in for x here, and I can find y. So do y equals $25 per hour, it's for 4 hours, plus the $30 insurance fee. So 25 times 4 is going to give me 100. So for 4 hours, $25 an hour, that would be $100, plus the $30 fee for insurance. So I got y equals 130 using this math here. So you can use the graph, you can use the equation, you can just um, think about it in your head, 4 times 25 plus 30. There's a few different ways to get that, but you can always check. What I would do is I would, I would check with the equation and check and make sure that's going to be in line with my graph, and that helps me know that I did it correctly. Okay, in the back side, we're talking about a taxi ride. So how much it costs for a taxi? Uh, so x is distance a mile, so 2 miles would be $7, and 4 miles is $11, and to drive 6 miles is $15, and so on. So it says graph the points in the table. So remember, this is a coordinate point, coordinate point 2, 7. X is first, X is 2, Y is 7. So when you graph coordinate points, you go over 2, up 7. So I'm going to go over 2, up 7. It's really easy to get these backwards. Now I noticed on the quiz, a lot of people got this backwards. So if you get coordinate points backwards, use the table instead. It says that X is 4, Y is 11. So using your table, you know what, this is, these numbers are x. So here, x is 4, and then here the y, well, x is 4, the y is 11. So if x is 4 and y is 11, where those lines meet is right here. And then when x is 6, so here's x is 6, you have that y is 15, and y is 15, and you find where those meet. So think like a bar graph. Like you guys know how to make bar graphs. So at 6, you can make it 15 high. So maybe that would help you with graphing. X is 8, so here's where X is 8. Y is 15, that's here. So I go up here and I go across to see where those lines meet. And your dots should always line up in a straight line to know that you did it correctly. Then use your ruler. Connect these ones straight through. You don't need to connect on the other one, but if you do, it's it's okay. All right, so number two. Is this a linear relationship? Well, linear means does it go in a straight line? Remember, if you take the word linear, you take off that AR. Look what word it says. It says line. So does it make a straight line? So it does. That means, yes, it is linear here. What is the slope? So you can do that a couple ways. You can find, we're going to find our rise over run. And I can count that with the graph. Now, the, all the lines are counted by 1, so I can just count the lines. So I'm going to pick two points. You see how far up I go. 
1, 2, 3, 4, over 2, 1, 2. So my rise was 4, I went up 4, and I went over 2. So my slope is 4 over 2, but go ahead and reduce that. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Another way you can calculate slope is using this table. So we also have that the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that's where you choose two points, and you find the change in y, your rise. So I went from 7 to 11, so figure out how far is it from 7 to 11. So I take 11 minus 7 to see 4. That's a change of 4. It went up 4. And then you find, figure out the change in x's from 2 to 4. So you take 4 minus 2 to see that the change was 2. So you would get the same thing using that slope formula, given two points. Now, what is the y-intercept? Um, you can look at the graph, but if you're not real sure, because I didn't draw that line exactly perfect, it's maybe at 3, but maybe it's at like 3.1. I'm not sure. So I'm going to use my table or an equation. I'll show you a couple other ways. So if you see a pattern in the table, I subtract 2, I subtract 2, I subtract 2. If I subtract 2 more, I'm going to get 0. And our y-intercept is always what x is when y, or what y is when x is 0. So if I see a pattern here, subtract 4, subtract 4, subtract 4. So if I take 7 minus 4, I get 3. So with x is 0, y is 3. So I know my y-intercept is 3. Another way is take this and do your slope backwards. Go over 2 and then down 4. And you get at 3 exactly. So I can continue the pattern of my slope but kind of work backwards. That's how I know it's 3. But here is the other way I really want you to know how to do. Because what if it is a decimal and we couldn't tell where it landed? What you do is you use this equation, y equals mx plus b. We know that the slope is 2. We still need to find b. So now you can pick an x and a y that fit on this graph. So let's say when um, x is 2, let's choose this point, which is right here. When x is 2, I know y is 7. When x equals 2, y equals 7. So again, x is 2, y is 7. You know that's true for this equation. When x is 2, y is 7. It's this coordinate point. So what I can do is I can plug in that x equals 2 and y equals 7. So check this out. This y I know is 7. And then I have 2 times x, which when y is 7, I know x is 2. So see, I, stick it, I pick a coordinate point, the 2, 7 coordinate point, and I plug it in for x and y. And I can solve this. So I take 2 times 2, which is 4. And I think, okay, 4 plus what equals 7? 4 plus what equals 7? So b must be 3, because 4 plus 3 equals 7. So that's the method I want you to use when the math isn't real clear. If it doesn't cross clear, if you can't tell here, you know, when you have decimals and fractions, I want you to use this method. On your quiz, it's going to be a harder one where I want you to use this method to solve it. Now that I have my slope and y-intercepts, your equation is always y equals, this m is your slope, and our slope is 2, x, and this b is your y-intercept. It's positive 3, so I put plus 3. If it was a negative, I would put minus 3. Okay, so now, how much would a taxi ride cost if your destination was 12 miles away? So we're going to use this equation and figure out 12 miles. Is that is 12 miles our x value or our y value? You can look at the graph. y is the cost. Distance is our x. So I gave you miles, so that must be the x value. So that's what you plug in for x here. So x is our miles, so x equals 12. We've got to find out what y is. So y equals 2, and this is multiplication, times 12 plus 3. So 2 times 12 is 24 add 3 to it to get 27. Don't forget your units. This is a story problem. You know, I want to know how much will it cost, so put $27. So you use your equation to plug this in for the last question. Y-intercept, I want you to pick a point. Use your slope, pick a point to solve for B. That's your quiz. Email me or come see me if you have questions. Thank you.